Course 3, Lesson 26, we are looking at our different transformations and how they show up on our graphs and also in our different rules for our transformations. So, first of all, when we start off, our first figure that we have is called a pre-image. And once we actually transform it, it becomes an image. Now, a translation is one of our transformations. That is when we slide something, and that can go left to right, up or down, or even diagonally. Next, we can rotate. This is like spinning something, okay, a rotation. doesn't actually change the figure, but um, we can move it by spinning it. Reflection also doesn't change the figure. It just, it's almost like a mirror, okay, a mirror image. We can have dilations. We can get larger, like an enlargement, or smaller, like a reduction. All of these are summarized right here where a translation, we move it horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Rotation moves it around a point, oftentimes the origin. And then reflection flips it across the line, giving it um, its mirror image. Okay. Transformations, we can see if we have line or rotational symmetry, which with these ones, we often do, especially like we have our symmetry right here. Okay. Now let's think about each of these. In a translation, do we get something that is congruent and similar or just similar but not congruent? Well, translation, we're just sliding, so it's going to stay congruent. We still have the same figure. It's just in a different place. So we get a congruent but similar figure. Reflection is the same way. Okay, We flip it, and so we have something that is congruent and similar um, because we don't actually change the size or the look of it. Okay. In a rotation, once again, we have a congruent and similar figure, but in a dilation, it's actually just similar because we're changing those side lengths, changing what it looks like, okay? The angles stay the same, which makes it similar, but it's no longer congruent, okay? So, oh, see, I picked the wrong one. I should have chosen similar but not congruent, and let's go on. So, on a piece of graph paper, we are looking at these different plots. We have um, my A at negative 1, 1, B at negative 5, 5, C at negative 5, 1, okay? And then we can put my image. So, let me bring, let me get a piece, some graph paper on here, and let's plot this, okay? And let's see which one we have, okay? So, if I take this, and plot my image. I am going to have it at negative 1, 1. Okay, we're going to have it at, that's my A. Negative 5. Oh, I should have drawn this a little differently. Let me erase that really quick. Let me try this again. Okay. All right, so we have my negative 1, 1, which is A. Negative 5, 5 which is my B, and C is negative 5, 1. All right, so we have my picture right here. Now I'm going to do the image of that, which we say is at 2, negative 4 for A prime. For B prime, we have it at negative 2, 0. That's my B prime. And my C is at negative 2, negative 4. So, what has been done to this? Well, we haven't rotated it, we haven't flipped it, we haven't made it any bigger or smaller, we've actually just translated it. Now, how we figure out how much is looking at, well, how much have I moved it right and left, up and down? So let's try it from the C. We would say, okay, to get it to C prime, I have moved it down, one, two, three, four, five, <coughs> and moved it to the right, one, two, three. This means that we have gone down five and right three, which means I can make a rule saying if I go from my original coordinates of x, y, I will go to saying that we have x plus three going to the right three and y we go down five. If we're going up and down, that's my y coordinate. If we're going right and left, that's my x coordinate. So if we go to the right, that's positive amounts. Left is negative amounts. 
up is positive amounts, down is negative amounts. Okay, so we see that we have a translation here. Okay, let's try another one. All right, let's get our graph again. Let's try this new triangle. Okay, we have D, E, and F. So, um, let me try this again. It's actually going to be lower on this one. So, we have my graph. We have one negative one is my D. We have E at 5, negative 5. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, yep. And we have F at one, negative five. Okay, we're gonna compare that to my image, okay, which is at one, negative one, that's my D prime. Okay, this is looking, maybe it's either a reflection or rotation. Okay, and then we have my E prime at negative five, negative five. Okay, so negative five, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is my E prime. Okay, less than, um, maybe still a reflection or rotation. And then my F prime at negative 5, negative 1. Which means that we have my triangle and it's not a reflection or else this would look like a mirror image. But it is a rotation. We are rotating about the origin and basically swinging it up into this corner. Okay, so if we think about coordinates, we're saying, okay, if I have my x, y, we want to go to some other um, rule for this. So let's see if we can make a connection here. If I have my f, and that's at 1, negative 5, I went to negative 5, negative 1, which looks like I flipped the 5 and the 1. So I think we flipped the x and the y. And then I say, but my 1 wasn't negative before, but it is now, which means my x becomes negative. Let's see if it worked for something else. So if we have my 1, negative 1, and it turns into, based on our rule, we have a negative 1, 1, which then we make this last one negative. Do we have a negative 1, negative 1 for my d prime? Yes, we do. So this is a rotation and our rule to go 90 degrees clockwise is we flip the x and the y and we make my new y negative. What was my x? We make that negative. So we have a rotation. All right, another one. Okay, let me get my graph here. All right, and let's see. All right, I'm probably going to have to use two for each um, point here, two blocks for each point because we're in some bigger numbers. But we start off with um, 1, 1, 3, 1, and 6, 4. Okay, maybe I'll just use one block for each. So 1, 1, 3, 1. Okay, so I have G, I have H. Okay, and then I have my 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so this is uh, G, H, J. Okay, so I have this triangle. And then I say, all right, I have G prime is now 2, 2. Okay, this is my G prime. Now my H is 6, 2. Okay, oh, sorry, H prime. And then my J prime is 12, 8. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, up 8, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up here, which means I have this big, huge triangle, which looks like, okay, it's not going to be, we're not just moving it because it looks a whole lot different, it's a lot bigger. We have a dilation. We have a dilation, which means if we're looking at our points, let's say we're looking at uh, 1, 1, 2, it's 2, 2. And with my other one, 6, sorry, 3, 1, 2, 6, 2. What is happening with all these points? Well, we have my original x, y, and it's becoming a 2x. We are multiplying by 2 on each of these, so 2x and 2y. Two okay, so we have a dilation. This is an enlargement. All right, um, we have a couple more examples here. OK, 
Okay, big idea is being able to describe them and then we find out our rules. Okay, so let's try this one. We have uh, my 2, 3, that's my K. My L is 5, 1. And my M is 6, 5. It's going to be up here, M. All right, and then I have my image at k is k prime is at negative two three. We have l at negative five one, and we have my m prime at negative six five way up here m prime, which when I look at this. I realize, well, this is a mirror image. It's a mirror image across the y-axis. So if I look at my um, points, if I go from 2, 3, okay, and my new one is negative 2, 3, or from my um, 5, 1 to my negative 5, 1, I'm not switching my coordinates, but I am taking my x, y, and when I flip it over that y-axis, I am making the x coordinate negative, okay, negative x, y, okay. So with this type of reflection, okay, reflection across the y axis, I am making my x negative. If we were to go off over the x axis, it actually makes my y negative. So this is a reflection. All right, so some um, just going through, if we have some rules like this, what type of transformation do we have? Well, if we're going x, y, 2, x plus 2, y minus 3, let's say we take ma ma an original point of like 1 comma 2. Well, that would mean it would become 1 plus 2, so x, 1 plus 2, which is 3, and then y minus 3, so 2 minus 3 is negative 1. This is a translation. We are moving it, okay? We're not making it bigger or rotating it by switching coordinates or making just one of them negative. We are translating it. Okay, and it should get me to, there we go. Okay, uh, what transformation is this? Well, like we talked about before, um, if we have a point like two comma three, this is telling me that I need to make my x negative. So I have a negative two comma three. Well, if we put it on a coordinate grid, okay, something like this, and go two, three, now my point is negative two, three. This is a reflection, okay? We are doing a reflection. One of those coordinates will become negative. This is a reflection, okay? Wonderful. So trans what transformation is this? Okay, if I have a point like five comma two, it's gonna become 10 comma four. That's not gonna keep the same size of shape, so this is a dilation, okay? And lastly, what type of transformation is described here? Well, if we take something like two comma three it becomes three comma two, and then we make my x negative, which means we have a rotation, okay? Whenever you see those x and y flipped, we're talking about a rotation. Awesome. So use coordinate notation to describe each translation, four units to the left and two units down. Well, that units to the left, that's gonna be negative, and that's gonna affect the x, and then two units down is gonna be negative, but that's gonna affect the y. So, we should be able to show this answer, maybe not, but you should have something like this. We have x comma y is gonna go to x minus four and y minus two. Similarly, with two units to the right, one unit down, we're going to say my x comma y becomes x plus 2 to the right is positive, one unit down, so we have y minus 1. Okay? All right, let's keep going. We have just a, a couple more things to talk about here. So if we want a reflection over the y-axis, over the y-axis, that means all of my x's are going to become negative. And we see something like this. Okay, that's what your reflection should look like. All of your x's become negative when you're reflecting over the y-axis. Okay, just like our rule states. 
and we can put our image. Um, these are just helpful rules that you can take some time to look at and we'll talk about them um, more later on in a different lesson. But if we're doing clockwise about the, about the origin with a 90 degree turn, we switch the x and y and make that x negative, okay, the new y negative. If we're doing counterclockwise, we flip the x and y, but the y, our new x, becomes negative, okay. Now if we have a 180 degree term, doesn't matter if I go clockwise or counterclockwise, but what I do is I don't actually flip the um, coordinates, but both of them become negative. Both of them become negative. That's for a 180 degree turn. So this is something that you can practice that on if you have um, something like A, B, and C. Do a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees and 180. Remember with the 180 we're going to go X, Y, and it becomes both a negative X, negative Y. So let's say if we wanted to take that A coordinate, which looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so 0, 8, it would become 0, negative 8. All right, it would be down here. And my B would become, let's see, that's at 4, 2 it would become a negative 4, become a negative 2. So we would be at um, negative 4, negative 2. We're in this quadrant, okay? So this is A prime, B prime, okay? And that C is at 0, 2, so it becomes 0, negative 2. So we're right here with C prime. That would be a 180 degree rotation. Now, if we're going to do our 90 degree rotation counterclockwise, let's go back to that rule, look at it one more time. So 90 degrees counterclockwise, we're going to switch it and make that um, new x negative. Okay, so we're going to instead here, let me just erase these and we'll try them again with our new one. Okay, so let's try. So my xy becomes a negative y comma x. So this is be going to become a negative 8 comma 0, a negative 2 comma 4, and a negative 2 comma 0. So this one is going to be at negative 8, 0. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. And then a negative 2 up 4, so this is my A double prime, B double prime, and my C negative 2, 0. Okay, so that's C double prime. So we have my two different rotations. My first one rotates counterclockwise, and we can see how it starts on this line here and ends up on this line, which would make sense if we're doing a 90 degree turn. And then my other one, it's a full rotation 180, so we start on this line and end on this one okay, but on opposite sides. Well, that was a lot of information, but I hope it was helpful for your homework and for studying.